Hey guys, welcome to my second review for tonight. Um, tonight I'm going to review the new Super Anti Spyware um, version, I think, 5? 5.0.1086. That's the newest one. So uh, we'll go and double check for updates. Make sure it's uh, fully updated. And uh, the interface is much, much nicer than the uh, old one. It's it's not the best I've seen, but it's not definitely not the worst. Uh, i got to wait for this to finish now. Let me pause and I'll be right back. Alright, so the update finished. As you can see, it was up, I just uh, updated it. Let's uh, go through some of the preferences here. They're basically some of the, you know, the standard stuff. Um, different integration, scanning control, real-time protection. Now we have this first chance prevention, and this comes disabled. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to run like half of the links with it disabled, and then I'm going to run the other half, half of the links. Or wait a minute. No, never mind. I've, I was mixing it up. For some odd reason, I thought that it was uh, something else. Jeez, my fault. Never mind. This thing is uh, first chance is do a scan on system startup or system shutdown. And if you want to scan uh, the services. So you can, uh, if you want, you can scan system services if new things have been added. Jeez. Uh, hijack protection. Updates. And then the help. So pretty basic stuff here and it's got a new feature here that says enable rescue scan for highly infected systems only that we'll see if uh, that comes into play or not you can do different repairs so if different things are broken in Windows you can use these to fix them and that's it really let's see what kind of uh, memory usage we got out of it here I think that's the only process. So you're looking... No, two of them. Core service, 5 megs. And... I think that's the user interface. Yeah, probably. 1 meg, so, you know, definitely under 10 megs. So that's uh, no problem. Nice and light. System's very fairly responsive, so I like to see that. Okay, no response from Super Anti Spyware. You can see it is running. I don't know what kind of technology they have for zero day malware. Dead. Some of these are dead already. Okay, so there's a problem with that file. Okay, so uh, a lot of these are dead. That's all right. So 
So, so far, I have seen nothing from Super Anti Spyware. I'm going to kill that program because it's using a lot of this one right there. Alright, so I'm going to do my secondary thing um, later. Uh, oops. Hold on now. So I'm going to enable that. I'm going to do a complete scan. Now I can scan. So I will be back. When this is done. So I'll see you soon. Alright guys, so, fin um, the new Super Anti Spyware here, finished scanning, and it found two threats, found two Trojans, both in temp folders, so we will remove those Trojans. <clears throat> It'll ask me to reboot. So I'm going to reboot, and I'll be back after it's done rebooting. Alright, so Windows has restarted here. And let's see if anything weird is going on in the background. Any uh, weird processes or anything like that. Okay. That was interesting. Looks like uh, Super Anti Spyro just crashed. Alright, so what I want to do first is I want to check out to see with Hitman Pro here if um, there's anything that it missed. And you know what? I'm sure there is. Because Super Anti Spyro isn't made to be a AV substitute, it's made to be an add on. Um, and see now it keeps crashing over and over so I'm sure there's something on here that definitely wants to uh, kill it and you know how I'm gonna check that out oh look rootkit this will give me a chance to uh, finally test uh, Komodo cleaning essentials on a rootkit ooh a boot kit master boot record So this is uh this is gonna be interesting for me here. I haven't played with uh with it in a while. So as you can see it uh let some things through because well it's not made to be a substitute, it's made to go along with something. So far um all it's found is that boot kit, as you want to call it, and some temporary files. So kill switch doesn't see anything weird in memory, but because it is a root kit, it's a driver, more than likely. So that's all right. Uh, there's some malware right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up Cleaning Essentials. And then I'm going to... Okay, I also want to show this to some people because apparently somebody was testing this and said it cannot detect... Uh, they said, oh, it won't detect a MBR modification. And I had to go, um, you forgot to turn it on. So, but you got to be careful with this too just like anything else but I'll show you guys where to go to turn it on okay this is getting annoying accidentally click custom scan you go to the little tool here you go to options and you have to select 
I select both of them. Report all modifications and uh, scan suspicious. I also like to scan with medium heuristics. That's just a per that's just a thing of mine. And now it's going to reboot. So I will be back with the results when cleaning essentials is done scanning. <clears throat> All right, guys. So cleaning essentials finished scanning here. All right, and I found some malware. And there you go, found suspicious MBR infection. So it did find the rootkit. It found some uh, temporary internet files. It found a temp file. Found uh, one piece of malware there. A couple of here. Found found that one, which uh, is another piece of malware. Yeah, it found uh, a couple of false positives. That's alright, we can turn those off, that's no big deal. And another temporary internet file. So we will click clean. And I think we can report these as false positives. And while that's being done, I am going to when this is done, actually, I'm going to reboot, and um, then I'm going to run a scan with Malwarebytes. And that will, uh, we'll see what comes up with that, and then we'll run another scan with Hitman Pro. And once that's all done, I'm going to bring in, I'm going to open up this uh, three, uh, 400 and like 70 some file, uh, fairly new malware, and we'll see what kind of detection it uh, gets on them. So, uh, let me reboot and I'll be right back alright guys so uh, here hold on one second alright so uh, Malwarebytes finished scanning and it didn't find anything so that's good to see and we will do a scan with Hitman Pro again and we'll see if it finds anything before I do that though yeah, that's alright I wanted to run CCleaner but I forgot to bring it in. So we'll let this scan real quick. Shouldn't be too bad. Looks like Super Anti Spyware keeps crashing after I start it up. So something's wrong with it. Don't know what. But um, it does have this alternate start. Maybe that'll fix it up. Alright, so there is a Trojan left over in a temp file. So that's interesting. So there is a little bit of a Trojan, but uh, one left over, but that's alright. I can get rid of that one real quick. But first, let's unpack this malware. 400 and, uh, well, apparently when you run the new Super Anti Spyware, it does not disable, um, the Windows, built-in Windows security, Windows Defender. So I'm going to, I'm going to disable that right now so I can run that, I can, uh, unpack that, uh, folder and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so it supposedly detected 150, so we're going to remove all of these. It might have detected a lot more and it grouped them together, we'll see. And apparently it keeps wanting to crash, but if, we, if I leave this window open, I can still use the program. So I don't know what happened, why it's just crashing um, over and over, so... They'll probably get fixed by the next uh, next version. The one thing I did want to add is Super Anti Spyware is now part of Virus Total, and as some of you may or may not know, when you're part of Virus Total, 
what happens is every so often VirusTotal sends you samples of the malware that you have not detected and um, that greatly helps you improve your detection ratio as a um, antivirus or anti-malware. The only thing is that um, it does take time so it's not like a first response type thing. So so far it says that it's removed well, we're down to 329, and I think that's where it's going to stay. So let's do some quick math here. So it was uh, 476. Yeah. Or wait, what am I doing? Jeez. There we go. So it, it only detected 16. No. Oh, yeah. Meh. So uh, it detected what? 29% uh, of the malware. Yeah. You go 147 divided by 476. Okay, so sorry, 30% uh, of the malware. Yeah, that should be right. So there is a, uh, a good number of malware left over. And um, as you can see, like I said, Super Anti Spyware is not an antivirus. It's made to be an add on. But at the same time, it does not have a great detection ratio. Um, they still need to work on that. And I'll prove it to you by running a scan with Malwarebytes on the leftover malware files. Because they're both anti-malware applications. Anti, basically, is what you want to call them. And we'll see how many um, Malwarebytes leaves over. But you can see it definitely detects a lot more. So um, Super Anti Spyware definitely needs to work on... Um, getting its detection where it should be. They really need to work on detection a lot more. Hopefully in the next versions that will be coming. So as you can see now, Malwarebytes is, uh, well, it says it's deleting them. There we go. So as you can see, it left uh, 30, much better than was that 329. So that's it for really for this review. Um, it's more like a preview than anything else. Hopefully, I did send them an error report. So hopefully, they'll figure out whatever's going on with why it kept crashing. And uh, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little review, and I'll uh, talk to everybody later.